so I'll go to Ava. Hi, good morning to everyone. Um, I would like to start my presentation uh, saying that this was supposed to be a joint presentation with my colleague, uh, Professor Janet Montgomery. Uh, she was going to present the isotope part, but for um, uh, due to unforeseen circumstances, she cannot be here. So we'll be presenting the isotope part myself. Uh, I'm not an uh, isotope expert, so I will do some uh, Janet's notes for, for that part of the presentation. So. Uh, what I'm presenting here is a multidisciplinary project uh, involving different people from different institutions. So we um, studied uh, mass grave uh, burial, an hypogeum, uh, dated back to the late Neolithic, uh, that was unearthed uh, uh, during uh, works for the high-speed train uh, line in, uh, in the north of Barcelona, in an area called La Sagrera. So that you have here. So uh, this hypogeum, this mass grave burial, contained more than 200 skeletons. And uh, as I said, they were dated back to the <coughs> Neolithic, and you have uh, some of the radiocarbon dates here. Uh, three uh, phases of use could be identified within the hypogeum. We have a first um, collective uh, burial uh, phase, which is at the bottom of the hypogeum followed by the simultaneous inhumation of more than 100 skeletons, which means that we have uh, more than 100 people that they were placed together or almost together at the same time in this mass, mass grave. And then uh, finally, we have a single inhumation of uh, one individual which was placed on top. So here we have the dates uh, from the three um, different uh, phases of use of the hypogeum. Uh, we selected 13 individuals, I will explain why in the next slide, uh, from this simultaneous animation of more than 100 skeletons for anthropological, genetic, and isotopic analysis. Uh, the anthropological analysis uh, was uh, done by um, Pat Balaguer, and um, in the anthropological analysis, they found that um, uh, they estimated the age and the uh, sex of the individuals, finding that in this second, uh, this, uh, second uh, phase, this second episode, uh, there were more juvenile individuals uh, compared to the first uh, episode. The first episode had like a normal demographic profile, and the second one, it seems to be a bit anomalous with a uh, high proportion of juvenile individuals. Um, there were no significant signs of trauma, perimortem trauma, that could be indicative of a kind of a violent episode that could explain this uh, simultaneous uh, deposition of uh, this uh, 100 plus individuals. And we didn't find also great foods associated to the burials. Um, the anthropologists, they studied the dynamics of the deposition and uh, they could identify uh, several population groups of <coughs> clusters of individuals that they had been placed at the same time or almost at the same time. So we did a selection of 13 individuals based on these uh, three on three different population groups. We have here population group A uh, with two children and uh, a young adult uh, female. Uh, we have population group three uh, also with uh, uh, three individuals, uh, uh, three of them adults. And then you have uh, here population group C uh, including uh, juvenile uh, adult individuals and also children. So you can see uh, just by looking at the, at the pictures of the different skeletons that they seem, to be a, they seem to be arranged in a quite intimate position. So you can see, for example, that uh, individual 18 uh, has his uh, hand placed over the skull of uh, individual 56. And his spine is aligned with the spine of uh, the young adult um, individual 68. In population group C, you can see the skulls here of uh, the adult individuals, the uh, children will be at the bottom, and all of them are also oriented in the same position. So it seems to be indication of intentional deposition of these people at the same time. So we sample these individuals, and we had three questions in mind. We wanted to know um, if uh, the individuals from these population clusters, if the individuals from the second uh, phase of use of the hypogeum were related, in particular those from coming from the same population cluster. We also wanted to know uh, which was the diet of the individuals uh, buried at La Sagrera, 
And uh, finally, just to try to see if we could have an indication of the cause of death, uh, or of the simultaneous uh, death of uh, this uh, group of individuals that they were placed uh, together in the second phase of, um, of, the, uh, of the site. Uh, for that, we sampled two samples per individual. Um, we used a complete sample for ancient DNA analysis, and the second sample, we just extracted the dentin, and we did replication in an independent laboratory in the Manchester Institute for Biotechnology with Professor Terry Brown. And uh, for isotope analysis, we used both uh, dentin and enamel, uh, to measure strontium and uh, carbon and nitrogen and oxygen uh, ratios. In terms of the DNA methods, I'm not going to extend, we applied um, initially a um, classical uh, PCR approach uh, that was focusing on the maternal lines uh, because the rate of success is higher and we wanted to know uh, if we could extract um, DNA with quality out of these samples. So we target uh, the most variable region within the mitochondrial DNA. As I said, the results were reproduced in a second lab, and we also cloned the PCR products to assess contamination and also uh, molecular damage, so artifacts. Um, we assess when we got the uh, haplotypes or the sequences, we assess, we are trying to prove kinship here, so it's important to assess if these sequences that we retrieve are frequent in the population or not, and for that we use two that databases, one containing all the sequences from mitochondrial DNA published up to date um, from different time periods, and the other one is a, a modern forensic database. So here we have a summary of the um, DNA results. So basically what we are looking at, I have organized here the skeletons uh, by cluster, a, B, or C in different colors. So what we are looking at is uh, the coincidence of uh, the positions uh, that we have here. So we can see that uh, we could get data out of uh, 11, 11 out of 13 skeletons, which is quite good, considering that uh, these are late Neolithic, so quite, quite old. And uh, most of the haplotypes, they seem to be <coughs> different from each other which two exceptions. So we have this haplotype that we search in the database and it wasn't represented, which means that it's a fairly uh, quite rare haplotype. Um, and it was present in two individuals but coming from uh, two different clusters. Um, we also have individuals 43 and 45 from the same cluster that they may share, they share this mutation, but for these individuals, for one of them, we couldn't retrieve the whole sequence, so still in the air, they could be related or not. And these are the only maternal relationships that we can infer out of all the individuals that produce results. So moving into the um, isotope methods, uh, this is our methodology. I'm just gonna say about this, uh, that the uh, samples that were prepared at the uh, preparation lab at uh, Durham University and um, samples were analyzed also at Earth Sciences, uh, also within uh, Durham <coughs> University, at uh, the oxygen isotopes at uh, NIGL, keywords, and the carbon and nitrogen isotopes at the University of Dartford. So um, these uh, here, you can, you can see the uh, strontium and iso uh, oxygen isotope ranges that we estimated were characteristic of the area of people living in uh, coastal Barcelona. Uh, uh, so we estimated that for uh, strontium, uh, the local ranges would be within uh, this uh, interval. And um, also using modern rain and ground uh, water studies, we uh, estimated that uh, local individuals may fall within uh, this range for um, oxygen uh, isotopes. So, these baselines, uh, they are indicating when we get the results of the individuals, if they were local to the area, from La Sagrera in this case, uh, the plain of Barcelona, or the, if they were coming from somewhere else. So here you have um, the results for um, strontium and um, uh, oxygen um, isotopes. So the key thing to take home from this slide <coughs> is that um, it seems you have here these pink bands, they uh, indicate the local ranges for uh, strontium here and for oxygen here. 
So you can see that while some individuals, these individuals here, according, they have a geological pattern according to the isotopes that is compatible from, uh, with them being from the area uh, of Barcelona, most, if not all, of the um, I, uh, oxygen ratios indicate, uh, well, non, only just in this individual, it shows a little overlap with the estimated values uh, of oxygen for the region. This is telling us that most, if not all, the individuals that they were buried at La Sagrera uh, were from, all of them were from somewhere else. They were not local. When we, we studied the carbon and nitrogen uh, results uh, for the uh, children individuals, we did bulk uh, carbon and nitrogen analysis, but for the adult individuals, we did incremental analysis. So we used the first molars for all the individuals. Uh, and basically, what the incremental analysis is looking at, you just um, slice the dentin in like uh, different uh, layers, and we measure the isotopes, and this, this gives us a relationship between the diet of the individual at a particular time of his life. Mm -hmm. So here you can see uh, the uh, carbon and nitrogen results. So one of the things that it's uh, obvious from the plot is that the children uh, and the adult individuals that we analyze, they seem to have uh, quite uh, different uh, values for uh, both uh, carbon, but especially nitrogen. We can have the children here that uh, it seems that uh, it suggests that the diet of the children and the diet of the adults at the time of death uh, was uh, substantially uh, different. So basically, uh, these values over here of the adults, uh, they are um, characteristic of a typical Neolithic diet. So predominant uh, C3 uh, terrestrial and plant protein diet. Uh, however, the diet of the children, uh, it has a higher content of both carbon and nitrogen. And this uh, could be suggestive of a maritime diet, more marine diet. So. Um, Another alternative um, explanation for this could be that the data indicate that the children were breastfeeding. However, and therefore there are a trophic level that is uh, higher than the adults. However, we are using first molars and we also did incremental analysis. So basically, we are looking at the same uh, point and the same time in life, both in adults and uh, in uh, children. And moreover, the carbon shift is too large uh, to be explained solely uh, by uh, breastfeeding effect. So we looked at the um, incremental dentin analysis as well. So I have just uh, presented uh, one of the plots of one of the adults, but more, most of them, they look the same way. So uh, this uh, slide basically is adding uh, further uh, evidence to the interpretation that the children were eating a different diet than the adults. So here um, you have um, a representation of uh, the nitrogen values, and uh, we have the bulk dentin data for the uh, children. As you can see, that they have very high uh, nitrogen content. So uh, these values are outside the range of uh, that will correspond to a diet typical of Neolithic populations. Uh, they have a much higher nitrogen content, and here we have the uh, representation of the uh, incremental data for the adults by age. So as I said, uh, this is other age of all individuals at a particular moment in time. So we can see that when the adults, they were children, the uh, nitrogen values, they were much lower. Mm -hmm. However, as life progressed, they uh, consumed, started consuming uh, uh, food uh, sources with a higher and higher content of uh, nitrogen and especially uh, prior uh, the death of the individuals. So, <clears throat> just to uh, summarize uh, the objectives of the talk and the uh, conclusions that we can draw from uh, our analysis, in terms of the, uh, if the individuals from La Sagrera we were wondering if these uh, population clusters, they were made out of individuals that they were related. So we have uh, our data argues about against this. So there is, in principle, no maternal relationship that we can draw 
within each cluster, but on top of everything, when we look at the uh, strontium and oxygen data, we can see that there is no uh, particular um, distinctive isotopic uh, signature within each cluster. It seems that individuals within the same cluster, they were coming from different locations, so uh, this is indicating that they are not related as well. And um, as I said, this variety within each cluster uh, indicates that uh, individuals within a cluster, they have different places of origin. So if we look at the individuals cluster by cluster, we can see this clearly. So not in all the cases we could retrieve genetic data out of all the individuals, but in this case we can uh, use the um, isotope data. So uh, we didn't get a sample from individual two, but we can see that uh, individual four, uh, the strontium ratio suggests that they are not local, and the same for individual eight. So still in the air why these individuals they were placed in such an intimate uh, position at the same time but they seem not not to be related uh, the same situation we have uh, for uh, population group b so uh, the strontium and oxygen uh, ratios they suggest that they are not local and they come from different places and also the uh, dna at least the maternal lineage cannot be compared it's different suggesting no kinship between them the third case, um, we have the same situation, non-local values and different, quite different in some cases uh, for uh, the adult individuals and also with the children. As I said before, the only genetic link that we could establish was between one individual from cluster C and uh, one individual from cluster A, but not among individuals belonging to the same cluster. In terms of uh, the diet of the individuals uh, buried in the hypogeum, we, had, um, uh, we just wanted to know what was the diet of the people, but we got this result of uh, differences between uh, the adults and uh, the <coughs> subadults. So um, our hypothesis is that uh, we observe um, these uh, values um, in other populations, for example, of the Shetland Islands, a study by Montgomery 2013, so we propose that uh, these people, they shift towards a marine diet just right before they died. Mm -hmm. So we see that when the adults were children, they had a typically neolithic uh, diet, but before death, uh, these individuals had a much increased uh, levels of nitrogen. So this could be also an indication of why uh, this shift in day it would be related also to the massive death of these individuals maybe perhaps in terms of uh, the most probable cause of the simultaneous deposition just looking at the uh, strontium values suggesting that these people this is indeed is not a population it seems like a conglomerate of individuals coming from uh, different places around Catalonia, probably in the north, in the mountains, if we look at the uh, strontium uh, map. And um, considering this change in death, in, uh, in diet that we observed uh, before the death of the individuals, we could hypothesize that uh, maybe these individuals, there was a sort of agricultural disaster that forced these individuals that they were living in the mainland in, in the north of Catalonia, in the interior part of Catalonia, to move towards the coast uh, to make use of these uh, uh, marine protein resources. So, uh, as I said, this has been proposed for other populations uh, in the Shetland Islands by Montgomery et al. 2013. So this could be explained maybe uh, or indicate points towards the right direction of why these individuals they died and uh, they were put together at the same time. So finally, just to acknowledge uh, Survey de Arqueologia uh, uh, Instituto Cultura de la Ayuntamiento de Barcelona, who fully funded this study, and the data I'm presented here uh, is the work of two uh, master students from uh, Liverpool John Bush University and from uh, Durham University. So thank you very much for your attention.